This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. The Hidden Killers Podcast. With Tony Bruschi. Robin Greek is with us. She's former FBI special agent and chief of the counterintelligence behavioral analysis program. want to talk a little bit more about uh, Brian Koberger with you. Uh, I, I want to specifically go to this new development. They've now discovered that in 2014, Koberger had an arrest. Uh, it has been expunged uh, from his record, but there was an arrest for stealing from his sister. He stole his sister's phone all the way to the point where the police got involved and his own dad telling the police that, yep, he stole his sister's phone. I, I, it seems like an interesting and I guess somewhat extreme to go to or dynamic uh, where you get the police involved of a sibling stealing another person's device. A lot of times I think that will be handled internally with a home of, Hey, you know, give the phone back. You can't do that sort of thing. Um, but going all the way to have the police involved in that, what does that tell us about the character of Koberger and, and the family dynamic that existed or, or, or does exist within uh, that, that group of people? Once again, Robin's going to take a an interesting look at this from a different angle. What struck me about that when they put it out in the news was this is when, and the father said it, this is when Brian was stu- was struggling with drug addiction. Yeah, and so he stole the phone, most likely to sell, mm-hmm. to make money, to fuel his habit, and bring it in. So let's let's do the the thought experiment here. Okay. Here you are. Let, let's remove for a second that. Our son's been accused because this is going back, you know, many years. Our, our, we have a child that is struggling with drugs, and it's gotten so extreme, and nothing seems to be working. As parents, we're distraught, we're heartbroken. He's struggled with other things before. He's written dark things. He's got mental health issues, and now he's a drug addict, and and now he stole something from his sister to to try to do these things. What are you going to do? You're mm-hmm. going to hopefully try to scare your son straight the best way you can to save his life. And so getting the police involved and things like that in that kind of situation, I don't see it as as the the crime itself. It's the it's the all the circumstances surrounding it and the timing of it in, in Koberger's life that led to probably the escalation that we saw. Again, conjecture armchair quarterback stuff. Mm-hmm. But when, when you kind of look at the totality of his, Koberger's arc, the parents arc, the father's arc, the, his involvement with his son. At, at all these key junctures in life. I mean, here here he is a father thinking he saved his son from drug addiction. Now he's charged with murder. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Yeah. It, it's, it, it makes sense from a parental standpoint of what am I going to do here? Uh, let's, let's try and, and like you said, scare him straight in the safest way possible. So they were probably doing the best thing that they possibly could have at the time. But I, I suspect with that and what we know also, I mean, it, it is, not confirmed, but to some of the conversations at Thanksgiving where the sister allegedly said, well, how do we know you're not the killer? You have the white Elantra and you right. lived over there. Uh, it, it makes me you wonder just how long uh, the red flags were on the family's radar about their brother, certainly not uh, or their son and certainly not knowing that he's going to go kill somebody or a group of people allegedly, but more so th- he's kind of a loose cannon, if you will. Forever. Yeah. I mean, I mean, his arc of his life has been around for a long time. I mean, he wrote about it in those text messages when he was a teenager about not feeling things. He had that condition where he had that that snowy Mm -hmm. kind of way he saw the world around him and always was struggling. And when he wrote about this, this is what kind of links everything together for me. He was always struggling to feel something. Yeah. Because he saw in himself a lack of empathy. He wasn't terminate that, but that's what when you don't feel things and or have emotional reaction to things, that's a lack of empathy. He didn't have it. And he's trying to fix it. He's trying to diagnose it and then trying to experiment with things as psychopathy does to feel something. And so drugs is something you're going to try to try to have an emotional response, a physiological response to stimulus. And then for him in his case, well, he's accused of murdering people, probably for the same motive, internal motivations to try to feel something, try to experience something. And I've, I've seen and been part of cases where you also have psychopathy, where they're trying to feel and experience something. But instead of 
murdering people. They steal hundreds of millions of dollars from people. They they get a rush. They get their final emotional response from things when they take high risk things and do high risk things because that's the only thing that'll stimulate the brain. So I I, I think the family wholeheartedly saw that arc in his life with all these behaviors. And so, yeah, it fits the pattern. What do you say to the people? And I, I guess I'm kind of surprised by this. Maybe I shouldn't be. Uh, but there is a large community out there of people who believe he did not do it. Now, I've yet to see any sort of convincing evidence from those communities that show that, that this man is innocent or any sort of exonerating evidence. And he is, of course, innocent until proven guilty. But what do you say to, to groups that, that kind of go on a bandwagon like that that believe that 60 FBI agents, the Moscow Police Department, the Idaho State Police, and the Pennsylvania authorities all conspired to frame Brian Koberger of every person that's out there. Let's go after this guy. Uh, what is what is that? What What is going on with people? Is this just a really weird, sick sense of community of people who always want to go for the underdog, uh, regardless of of the evidence against them? Or, I don't know, is this something else that we're seeing uh, in in society with a, a tribe like this that gets created? There's numerous things there. The, uh, that, to me, when you hear things like that, it makes me curious. I just want to talk to those people because something made them. Yeah, <laughs> you know? exactly. You know, yeah. you know th- th- there's an arc of life there that made them these skeptics that gave them a, a negative confirmation bias as well as a distrust in systems organizations and government uh, for some reason and we've seen a lot of that so it's you know it, it makes sense from on a surface level but when you dig deeper like we are and you see all these things it it, it falls apart but at the same time like we've been talking about during this case um in general is you know that's a it's another example of confirmation bias when you don't trust organizations and institutions and you are always and and if you had one experience or two maybe where the underdog in your life that you experienced was wronged and they were actually should have been exonerated they're going to then try to validate and see that in everything mm-hmm. as human beings one of the things we do it's why we have these confirmation biases we are constantly searching for patterns and we're trying to fit our world into patterns all the time. And so if we have a pattern that we saw that meant something and impacted us in an emotional way at a certain point in our life, especially during those early formative years, we're going to try to fit everything we can into that pattern because when we confirm those things that we validate our own self-opinion and how we see the world around us, it makes us feel good. And if we think the world is out to get people and we think the underdog is being beaten down by the man all the time, we're going to constantly try to see it all those situations in that light. And we're only going to then look at the evidence that supports our own theories and hypotheses. Sure. That makes sense. And a long answer. There you go. (laughs) (laughs) You're locked into the hidden killers podcast. Want more? Start binging on all of our true crime podcasts right now through Apple podcasts and get an ad free experience. When you sign up to be a true crime today, premium plus member exclusively on Apple podcasts More of the hidden killers podcast. Dropping soon. Press subscribe now.